Good morning. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Um, I see that we have some friends here with us, but I actually cannot see any friends' faces. Uh, any of you willing to turn your cameras on and say hello? And if not, that's okay too. So today is the, does anyone know which day of Ramadan it is? Number five, number five. All right. I'm going to read a book to start. I read it last year. It's one of my favorites. I read it every Ramadan. Anyone heard of this book before? The Drummer Girl? Anyone? Anyone? Yes. Okay, Anissa and Adam. Very nice. Um, Ryan, are you still there? I see people trying to get in. Oh, yes. All right, just keep, if you could keep an eye out on that part, so then I, thank you so much. All right, yeah. Alina's also heard of this book. I know Alina was here last year for our story time too, and we still have new friends coming. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Assalamu alaikum. All right, well, we're going to start with the drummer girl, and then, um, we will take it from there, okay? This is Asia. Asia has woken up for Suhoor almost every day. She helps us set the table for iftar every day. And um, she makes special drinks and sets the table in a very fancy way. She helped me decorate the house. She's memorizing surahs. Mashallah, we're very proud of her. This Ramadan is probably her best yet. And bismillah. Drummer Girl. <clears throat> Many years ago in Istanbul, at the far end of the Gul Pasha Kadesi, uh, where the cobbled road dips, sorry, I'm moving a lot, where the cobbled road dips toward the Sea of Marmara, there was a small white house with a brick red roof. If you ever walked by this house on a Friday when the sun was setting, you would hear an old woman singing softly to herself. Why do you sleep? Why do you sleep? Wake if you know what is better for you. Why do you sleep? Your Lord the Merciful is waiting for you. So there she is. So if you followed the lilting melody and peeped inside the black iron gate of the small white house with the brick red roof, you would see Grandma Najma sitting on the front steps and she would look up at you questioningly. Her brown eyes were the shade of a date and they would squint a little and her strong wrinkled hands would go on tapping the beat of her song against knees carefully hidden under folds of her long red skirt. So, let me try to position this so it's not so, it's okay. Long before she was Grandma Najma, you can come around the other side, Asiya. Long before she was Grandma Najma, she was simply Najma. She had lived in that same house since she was a little girl, but in those days, she lived with her Baba, Mama, and two brothers. Najma went to school in the morning, and in the evening, she helped her mama around the house as she swept the earthen floors and washed the porcelain cups in which her baba drank his fragrant tea. She would sing, wake, O oh believers, big and small. Your Lord is watchful over you all. Ramadan Kareem, Ramadan Kareem. Najma loved Ramadan, okay? She loved searching the sky for the new moon. I'm sorry, you can't see my face if I'm holding the book, so I'm going to try to make it so you can see both. She loved searching the sky for the new moon with her baba and stringing up the fanus lights. She loved wearing the special clothes sewn by her mama, and she loved the fancy tea set that mama would take out with its tiny spoons that her brother would carefully shine and the steaming bowls of shorba that they all had for iftar. Um, Okay, she, she loved falling asleep to the sound of night prayers at the distant masjid. Most of all, she loved waking up before dawn as the musaharati passed through her street. Uh, 
Musaharati, you can see in this picture, the man with the drum, do you all see it? A Musaharati is a special Ramadan drummer. He walks through the neighborhood in the hours before dawn, beating a drum and chanting special songs. He does this to wake up all the sleeping people so they may take Sahur, the pre-fast meal, and pray the Fajr prayer before the long day of fasting begins. A Musaharati stands in front of each home and calls the people of that home by name. Every night in Ramadan, Najma would hear her father's name being called out. Wake, O oh Ali, wake, O oh household of Ali. This time, the time for the Lord's bounty is upon you. Okay, see that? See that drummer man? For as long as Najma could remember, Ramadan had meant hearing the musaharati, the thump, thump, thump of his drum, and the sing-song poetry of his melodious voice. And for as long as Najma could remember, she had carried a secret dream. She wanted to do that job. She would hum the tunes and imagine walking through the neighborhood, waking up her friends and neighbors. One day, when Najma was 12 years old, and Ramadan preparations had begun. She went and sat on the floor by her Baba. She put her head on his knee and he stroked her hair. Yes, Najma, what is it? She said, Baba, I want to be the Musaharati this year. I want to beat the drum and sing the verses and wake everyone for Sahur. My friend told me that Brother Yusuf, our neighborhood Musaharati is not feeling well and is looking for a replacement. Please, Baba, this dream has been calling to me for years. So there she is with her Baba and her brother. Baba's kind eyes met hers. I mean, after a long time, he said, you want to be the Musaharati? And she said, yes. He tapped her gently on the nose and he said, well, I don't see why not. And her heart leapt with joy. Baba had spoken and that was that. And do you know what that was that her brother said she was being silly and her friends thought she had lost her mind, but Baba had spoken. Like beads slipping by on a tespi, days passed and Ramadan came closer and closer. Girls can't be a Musaharati, someone said to Najma every day. Girls can be anything they like, Baba said to her every night. Soon Ramadan arrived and the silver crescent of the new moon had been seen. The neighbors called out joyous greetings to each other. Ramadan is here, Ram glad tidings for a wonderful month. And that night when her brothers had gone to bed, Najma put on her favorite long red skirt and wrapped her scarf around herself. She took out the drum Baba had bought for her earlier, put on her gloves and slipped out. There she is with her Baba. So it looks like he came with her, she had company. Najma and her Baba walked down the narrow alleys and twisting pathways up and down the cobbled roads of their neighborhood. Her hands beat steadily on her drum. Thump, thump, thump. Here, I happen to have a drum here. I'll say, can you thump, thump, thump it a little bit? Thump, thump. Yeah. yeah, look at that. I like her drum. Wake from your bed if you believe the blessings of Suhoor you must achieve. There's no time to sleep and no time to dream. Say it now with me, Ramadan Kareem. Can all of you say it? One, two, three, Ramadan Kareem. Ramadan Kareem. I couldn't hear you guys. Say it one more time, really loud. One, two, three, Ramadan Kareem. Ramadan Kareem. Great. Many people stepped out in their balconies to watch. Was it really a girl's voice they were hearing? Some threw candy and sweets to her, which she re re received with a shy nod. I'm not right. When Najma and her Baba had drummed at the doors of all the neighbors, they went home. Mama had suhoor ready for them. Najma was hungry and tired. She ate, prayed fajr, and went to sleep for a long time. And while she slept, she had a beautiful dream. She saw herself walking with her drum down a long winding path illuminated by lanterns of different colors and sizes. As she walked, she could hear the sound of many people reciting the Quran. When she woke up, she was happy and peaceful inside. She felt sure she would be a good Musaharati and that Allah was pleased with her. 
that Ramadan, Najma and her Baba spent all their nights the same way. They walked through the neighborhood and Najma sang out the verses and beat her drum. When the neighbors realized that she was coming out night after night, nobody teased her or laughed at her. They grew to respect her and love the brave girl who uh, was coming out night after night. And they invited her family to break the fast in their homes and they proudly spoke of her in other neighborhoods. When the time came that Grandma Najma's bones grew too tired for her to be a Musaharati, she gave her drum to her grandchildren. And every Ramadan, she would carefully put on her favorite red skirt and wrap her shawl around her shoulders. She would sit on the steps of her small white house and she would gently tap against her knees, singing. Yeah, you can. Why do you sleep? Why do you sleep? Rise if you know what is better for you. Hurry and wake, his blessings to take. Your Lord, the merciful, is waiting for you. Ramadan Kareem, Ramadan Kareem, Ramadan Kareem. That's the end. That's the end. All right, everyone. For our next story. <clears throat> All right. So this one, actually, Asya, you want to be the page turner? You want to come stand here and turn the pages? Mm -hmm. That'll be very helpful. You want to tell them the name of his book? Go ahead. You know it. Ramadan Moon. No, how about the name of the book? The Gift of Ramadan. Great. Okay. Gift of Ramadan by Rabia Lombard. All right, the pages are a little bit, um, the writing's a little bit smaller, but I'm hoping you guys can at least easily see the um, pictures, okay? So, a rainbow of color winked at Sophia as she handed the Ramadan lights to her mama. They were her favorite decorations. Grandma said, pretty and sparkly, just like the heart of a person who fasts. Sophia stopped twirling, really? And um, she loved sparkles, glitter, stars, her new ring. It was a gift from grandma for her birthday last month. Grandma stopped rocking, really? You wanna turn, the oh, you left, okay. So Sophia knew that fasting meant you don't eat or drink from sun up to sundown. She loved food, but she also loved sparkles. So she turned to her mama and said, when does Ramadan begin? And her mama pointed. She, oh, she's Adam, Sophia's little brother, said moon. That's right, mama said. See how thin it is? That's the crescent moon, the hilal, the beginning of a new month. Tomorrow is the first day of fasting. Count me in, Sophia said. Mama woke up Sophia when it was time for suhoor. Do you guys see her here? Uh, and for Sahur, she said, Sophia sat down. There was eggs, fruit, dad's pancakes, but she could barely keep her eyes open. You have to eat, grandma told her. It will chase away the hungries. She reached for a pancake, but a few minutes later, she was asleep. Then everybody was praying fudger. And they, after dad said, time's up. Sophia tried her best to stay awake, but the moment her head touched the ground, sleep came over her. Mama reached forward to nudge her, but Grandma waved her finger to say, let her sleep. When Sophia was awake in the morning, it was almost lunchtime. Her tummy was empty, her throat was dry, but even drinking water was against the rules, so she decided to stay busy. She read for a while, she organized the clothes in her closet, she drew and drew and drew, but her tummy got louder and louder. Shh, Sophia said, I'm drawing. Yikes, she said, I've got to get out of here. She realized she was drawing pictures of apples, pizza, bananas, cookies. Sophia found Adam in front of the TV, and in his hand was a humongous cookie. He <laughs> waved it in front of her and said, me, cookie eat, yum, yum. Her tummy roared and that cookie looked so delicious. She said, please stop, but he kept singing. She closed her ears. She ran out of the room. 
Her brother chased her and he was fast, but she was faster. She needed to hide. He was still looking for her. She turned down the lights. Oh no, I've really got to get out of here. She plugged her ears, closed her eyes, but the scent of chocolate filled her nose. Sophia thought about that. She knew Mama read the Quran. Maybe it gave her head sparkles, but she couldn't read it on her own. And her dad was always sharing things with family, friends, and strangers. And he said that Ramadan was a time for extra charity, a special kind of sharing for those who need extra help. But Sophia didn't have any money. She was about to give up when she glanced at grandma's hands. They were covered in flour. She said, what are you making? She said, yummy food for our first iftar. That's it. If she couldn't fast, then at least she could help prepare dinner for those that could. I'm going to help. So she put her apron on and got to work. She tossed salad, helped grandma make five super sparkly pizzas, one for each person in the family. Sophia thought they were sparkly because they had extra cheese. Grandma thought it was the fresh parsley that made them shine. When the oven buzzed, Sophia jumped from her chair. The top three pizzas were perfect, but the bottom two were a little bit burned. Grandma plopped down. She looked exhausted. Don't worry, Grandma, said Sophia. I've got this. So she set the table. She gave each person a big bowl of soup and a salad. She put a pitcher of water and bowl of dates on the table and asked Grandma to cut up the three perfect pizzas. Tiny slices were better than none. Sophia's family gathered around the table. They raised their hands they, and made dua. They each drank water and ate a date. When there was only one slice of pizza left, Grandma insisted that Sophia take it. You earned it, she said. No thanks, Sophia smiled. She didn't want any more. She didn't need any more. Her heart was wonderfully full. The end. All right, you guys have been a great audience. We're gonna have story time again next week. Same time, same place. All right, thank you guys so much for joining us. Salam alaikum. Bye. 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 Bye.